What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Immersive Engineering. And today guys, we're gonna be setting up the Alloy Kiln, which is a relatively simple and small multi-block structure, which is gonna allow us to easily make different alloys that are offered by Immersive Engineering. Now there's actually only two alloys that are offered and we're really only caring about one of those and that is going to be Electrum. Now we've made Electrum a couple times before, you've actually seen me do it on camera because I forgot we needed to do it a lot of the time. And the reason is because we are now making heavy engineering blocks. We're using them for a lot of the builds, using them for the diesel generator, the excavator, things like that, and these all require Electrum. Now it's definitely not a ton, but as you've seen, when I make it in the videos, I'm really not always prepared for it and it comes down to uh, you know making the grit because we need something where we can make the ingots directly into it rather than throwing them into the crusher, pulling out the different grit and then combining that and then cooking that down. So it'll save us a step here and there, but it's definitely a nice thing to have. So we're gonna be setting that up today and because it is so simple and I do wanna give you guys a little bit to watch and learn about other than that, we're gonna be going over uh, earmuffs which we're going to be using now, considering we have the diesel generator, which is not currently running, but it should be running decently frequently. Uh, I'm in the process of attempting to balance out all of the different uh, garden cloche we have over here to get these to run at similar rates, and we're kind of uh, burning through some of the excess sugar cane until these match up, and then it should be running pretty consistently. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna be making earmuffs for that. It's gonna reduce the sound by about 90%. And for video making purposes, that's really nice. It means I don't have to worry about it interrupting the video. And if it does interrupt the video, I don't need to go over the uh, sound clips where it does and reduce the noise because it is a different audio channel. I can do that and I have done that, but it's a little bit of a pain. Now, the last thing we're gonna go over today is using the projector. And this is something that people have been asking me to use for quite some time now. And its main purpose is allowing you to see a projection in the world uh, that you can rotate and mirror from side to side of how to construct different multi-block structures. And so you can see that there's a ton of them. There's the improved blast furnace projector, metal press projector, crusher projector. The one we care about is the alloy kiln projector, um, which is just displaying instructions for making the alloy kiln. So it's definitely really easy. You're only gonna need to make one of them and then you can turn it into all of these when you need them. And uh, it'll save you a lot of time. You're not constantly going back into the book, which again will be great for video making purposes. So if any of you out there are watching this that produce content for YouTube and you're making immersive engineering stuff, a lot of the stuff in today's video is gonna be pretty useful for that. So we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is grab out the stuff, let's say for making the projector. So for this, we need two iron ingots, some glass, some treated wood and a lantern. So let's see if we actually have some of that stuff. So we have the iron ingot and we actually don't have any of the lanterns. So we need to go make some iron plates. We may need some glass and then we definitely have glowstone. Uh, but I think that's the one thing. Where are our actual blocks? There we go. And we do have glass and we have glass panes, which is awesome. So we'll go throw these into the metal press over here because I don't think we have any extra anymore. And yeah, so I remember we talked about this before, but thankfully now I believe we can move it. So I think we said if we push it in from the side, it works, right? Yep, so because we no longer have the door out here because I have everything hooked up, uh, and I did wanna talk about this a little bit, uh, I have everything hooked up with the excavator to have it running and dump things directly into the crusher and then the crusher outputs here. Um, and so we can go over that a little bit later, but uh, that is why we no longer have the door there. So yeah, now we have three lanterns, which is awesome. Uh, and I guess we used up some of the iron that I had grabbed uh, for that. So we'll come back in here and what do we need? So we need treated wood. Uh, where do I have a bucket? Right here, because we have a ton of creosote over here. So I have no issue using that all up and we'll turn this into planks first and we will get some. Now the reason I don't have much treated wood around is because of something else that I have to talk about today. Um, but there we go, we have the projector. Now it says craft with the engineer's manual. And so the way that this works is in the engineer's manual, you are going to open it up. And I believe that this is under oil processing. Um, so you do need to have all the accessory mods for a lot of what we're gonna be going over in these future episodes. They're always in the mod list, but I see people asking. Um, and it's like immersive petroleum and stuff like that. We do have all the add-ons. I think we have all of them covered. So just so you guys know, you do need those if we're gonna you know, follow all this. But 
I believe this is what adds the multi-block projector. And if we look in here, it's uh, going to say that you are going to use the engineer's manual uh, and the projector, and you're gonna turn the engineer's manual to whatever page you want for the you know multi-block that you're making in the manual, uh, combine it with the projector, and you're going to pull out whatever page you had for the projector. Uh, and then the next thing is the you know most important stuff, which is how it actually works. So holding the projector will display the structure, pressing the pick block button will rotate the structure, sneaking and doing that will mirror it, uh, which makes it really great for building stuff that's mirrored because that's a huge pain to go through in your head. Uh, clicking it will lock the image in place, and as long as the projector is in your hotbar, you will be able to see it. And sneaking and right-clicking will unlock it. So and if you're in creative mode um, and you're testing stuff out, sneaking and locking the image will build the multi-block automatically. So that should cover all of that. I know that's a lot of information. Uh, really, the only one that's important is that if you right-click with it, it's going to lock the image in place so you can scroll on your hotbar and do other stuff. And if you shift right click, it's going to pull it off the hot bar so that you can move it around. Or if you're done with the build or anything like that, you can get rid of it. Those are really the crucial ones. But now we have the projector. So what we want to make today is the alloy kiln. And that is going to be up at the top here in, I believe, overview and resources. So right below the Coke oven. So the alloy kiln is made from kiln bricks. Um, and it's a simple furnace made out of heat resistant sandstone and brick. And I believe we actually are going to have to go get some sand to make sandstone from because I don't think we have much left. Um, but it allows you to make important alloys like Electrum and Constantin uh, without requiring tedious mixing of dusts. Now, it only is going to require uh, eight of them. It's a two by two by two. And you simply click it and you're going to have two inputs and an output. Uh, and then you are going to have oh, two inputs for different ingots and then an input for fuel, something like Coke or coal Coke. Uh, and then you're going to have the alloy you're going to get out of it. So very, very simple build. Um, now, before we jump into that, we are going to make one last thing, which I believe they're called earmuffs uh, or ear protectors, ear defenders. Okay. So you can make them in, uh, I want to say different colors. You can see it lists the color here, but it's going to require three iron rods and then two different wool. So we do have, we have steel rods up there. We have three iron rods down there, awesome. So we have all that we need. And I didn't grab the wool out yet, so we're gonna use brown wool because we're very fancy. And there we go. We have ear defenders. Now I believe we are going to have to take off our Faraday helmet to put those on. But if we walk over here, so they make everything very, very quiet, um, which is a little bit weird. But if we have this on over here, it'll be really nice. So I may keep those in my inventory and only throw them on when we're over here because muffling things like chests, I feel like is kind of weird because then it sounds like you're almost not in the game with me. It sounds like there's no sound, which kind of bothers me. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do that and then we can sleep for the night. We're going to go get the stuff to make the alloy kiln and then we can finish up here. So to make the alloy kiln, you are going to need eight kiln bricks and to make the kiln bricks, we need bricks and sandstone. And so those are going to make two, which means that we are going to need eight sandstone and eight bricks. And I don't actually know if we have any of that. Uh, I know we used to have bricks and stuff, but we use that for other things. Yeah, so it doesn't look like we have any sandstone or bricks. We have clay, so we can cook that down uh, over here, and that'll make all the bricks we need. That should make eight, but we need some sandstone. So... We're gonna go have to get a fair bit of sand. Luckily, we have our trusty diamond shovel and we can just kind of go tear up. Eh, I mean, we've already torn up most of this area over here. So what's a little bit more, you know? What's a little bit more? We'll get right over here so we can stay away from the water messing with too much stuff and just hop down here in a second, collect all of our goodies. And eventually I will have to come out here and fix this because it looks absolutely atrocious over here from all the clay that we've gathered and sand. Uh, but let's see if that's going to be enough. So it is, I think it is, right? We said, I'm gonna get 16 stuff for 16 just to be sure, but I'm pretty sure we said we only need eight. So there we go, should be more than enough. I don't think we're gonna use sandstone for anything else ever, um, but this, so. We should be good. Hopefully the stuff is cooked down up here and we can make this nice and easy. Okay, well, most of our bricks are almost cooked down, but what we can do is go into the engineer's manual. We're on the alloy kiln. So if we open the inventory, put the projector in here, engineer's manual, we pull out the alloy kiln projector and it counts as a new craft. 
Um, and you can see you still have the engineer's manual. It doesn't consume it. Uh, you can flip the page and switch it again. You just easily flip between them. And there we go. We have all the bricks. We have everything we need here. Got the eight kiln bricks. And now it is time to set this up. And we are going to be setting it up right over here. Now, this is where I wanted to put it anyway. But we will get to what all this is in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the projector, put it in our inventory. When we pull it out, you can see that if we right click in front of a block, it is going to show us the projection. Now I right click there so I can scroll off it and it shows me these are where the blocks I'm holding need to go. So if I put these down, now it moves to the next level and now it is done. Now I don't know why this treats it as a three by three by three because it is a two by two by two. But if we go in and we use the engineer's hammer, we can right click anywhere in here and now it treats it as a finished block. And so all we do is shift right click, shift right click, we get rid of that and boom, we have our alloy kiln and we can switch off the kiln projector to a regular one if we put something else in here and easily use it again, which is definitely awesome. And I think this actually looks pretty cool. I like the color of it. And like I said, we have the inputs for the two different ingots you put in. We have the different fuel source and then we have the output. You can see the recipes. There's only the Constantin, which is going to be copper and nickel. Um, and we have a lot of nickel now that we're gonna show you. Uh, and then we have the Electrum, which is silver and gold. And you can make it with ingots. You can make it with grit. You can make it with an ingot and grit. You can do it with whatever you want. So what we can do is come out here and we should have some gold that we can grab. We should have some silver that we can grab and we can come over here and grab some coal coke. We can throw these in there, throw that in there and it will start cooking down, which is definitely nice. Now we have everything set up and we will have plenty of electrum that will be easily made for us for the next time we have a big build, which will hopefully be soon. Now, We've gotten through the stuff for today's episode, which means those of you that came here for information can head out without having to worry about listening to me ramble. But there are a couple things I want to show you guys for those of you that have been around for the whole series and are interested in what's been going on around the base. And that is mainly what is going on over here. And I made a little bit of, a, of an accident. So we're going to go over. And before I show you what's in those, we are going to take a look at uh, the back over here. So we have the excavator. And it's hooked up. We got a lever over here. It's got the power coming out and it's not on right now. And I can flick it on. Uh, it's no issue. But uh, you can see it'll start spinning. It'll start kicking stuff out over here. And it doesn't always run. Uh, right now the power is split between refilling um, the uh, capacitor over there and powering the system. And the way that that works is every time we hear the diesel generator running, this is going to run for a little bit. And it's also going to make sure that there is full power over there, which is great because a lot of how we generate future power is using the power that goes into our high voltage setup. So it's nice having that always being full. That way we don't ever run out of power if this burns through all of it, which it actually would do. Um, but you can see that we have stuff traveling down here. It goes up through the wall and that is what leads into our crusher and it dumps right into it so that it will all get crushed down and we will just get a ton of the uh, grit coming out of it. So that's gonna pop out right over here. And most of it's nickel, some of it's iron. I think about five to 10% of it's iron, 90 to 95% is nickel. And we definitely don't need that much nickel, but it's still there. Uh, and so what I did was I turned it on and I was gonna record. I was gonna record like a day ago. And I ended up not doing that. And I went AFK and I didn't realize that I didn't have the game, I would say like, you know, closed out, not closed out, but like I, you know, I had my inventory open. I didn't have escape pressed or anything. I wasn't in one of the menus. The game was still running behind me. And I came back today and the game was really, really laggy when I went to record. And I was like, I wonder what that is. So uh, it turns out that everything kept running, of course. And because it was on a conveyor belt, none of the items despawned which I guess is good, but now all of these crates are filled with grit of iron and mostly nickel. So what we're doing now is slowly grabbing out the grit and replacing it uh, with ingots. And then slowly we will turn those into blocks because we need to store them 
and then we'll find somewhere to throw them. Um, and I guess maybe I'll make a back wall here of a ton of crates for different blocks and in ingots, and we'll store everything there, and we'll make a better smelter setup, sort of, that everything automatically gets pulled over from this chest and, you know, goes across the ceiling, gets dumped in there, and then gets put into the respective crate. I don't really know yet, but uh, that is the plan. I just wanted to let you know, though, that it happened, and that was kind of funny, but now, uh, even though only about 5% of this is iron, it netted me a bunch of stacks of iron. I don't actually know. We've got, you know, one there. Uh, we have one stack of iron here, a stack here, a uh, stack here, a couple stacks in other ones. So all in all, we have maybe, I'd say, about nine to ten stacks of iron grit. Uh, yeah, because we have two collected there, uh, a lot here, th almost three there. So yeah, a lot of iron, actually, more than we're probably going to need for a while here. Uh, so yeah, not too bad, but I thought it was pretty funny that we ended up with all of that because I definitely would have liked to have been able to manage it a little bit better. I would never have let this thing run so much if I had known. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a ramble about what I've done in the world so far while we've been away off camera. Um, but I do want to say, because this is going to be going up on Wednesday, uh, which is the day before Thanksgiving, that I hope for those of you uh, that do celebrate Thanksgiving, that you get to eat a, bo a bunch of awesome food with your families and get to enjoy your time off of work, your time home from school, if you get a nice break off. Um, you know, if you're from college, you might have the whole week off. If you're, you know, in K through 12 or whatever you want to call it, wherever you live, uh, then you might have a couple days off. I hope you guys get to enjoy that. I know all of you definitely deserve the break. Uh, and I personally am enjoying being on break too. And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but are still getting to enjoy the break, I hope you get to have awesome food that is not Thanksgiving related, um, and that you get to relax. So I hope you guys are having an awesome time and that you continue to have an awesome time. Um, and, you know, spend it with family and friends. And that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you later.